Hello, welcome to this third video on the definite integral. And we are going to evaluate the definition of the definite integral from scratch. I'm going to give you a function, I'm going to give you an integral, ask you to calculate the area under the curve, but from the definition, from the Riemann sum. You can do it. All right, don't give up. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Um, let's get started. So there's an interval that you'll have, okay? And that interval will start at A and end at B, okay? And what you're gonna do is cut that into sub-intervals. And so the, there's the, the next interval. Um, click over would be taking A and adding one copy of delta X. Remember, delta X is the entire interval length B minus A divided by N, the number of intervals that you want to make. And so if you add a second copy of delta X, that will take it to the second click over. Three copies of delta X added to A gets you to the third click over. Generically, we have I copies of delta X. And so that would get us to the ith click over. And it keeps on going after that as well until you get to B. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll label these guys. This is X0 or X0, I like to call it. And we have X1, X2, and the counter is how many copies of delta X you're using. They match up, X3. So what this guy is going to be is called XI. All right, great. Now we have to decide um, where we want to evaluate the function at. On the interval, someplace left end point, right end point, midpoint, somewhere else, we have to evaluate the function to get the height. What we're doing is getting rectangle areas. And so two dimensions, the, the height and the width. We know the width already is delta x, the same for each of these, but it's the height that's going to vary based on the function. And in the formula we have is f of xi star. xi star just says where in each of these intervals you're going to evaluate at. So let's go right in points. Every time I'm at an interval, I go to the right endpoint. Okay? So I'll call that the first interval there, I have to evaluate at x1. In the second interval, I'll evaluate at x2, because that's the right endpoint. In the third interval, I evaluate at x3. And I'll continue on. The last one is called x sub n, the b. Okay? But you never evaluate at a, though. Okay? Um, and then what you do is uh, each of those heights, or multiplied by delta x, but instead of putting delta x on each one of them, we can factor out the delta x, and this will be our limit. All right, great. Now we have to um, put in some some more notation here. Uh, the xi star that's in the definition there for us now is going to be xi when we're doing right endpoint. The first one is x1, the second one is x2, so just xi is going to be what the inside of f is. It's what's plugged into our function f. Okay. And for us, xi is this a plus i delta x that's on our number line there. So a plus i delta x is plugged into f. Okay. Remember, delta x is b minus a over n. So it'll be multiplying the function evaluated at a plus i delta x, but you can put what delta x is, b minus a over n, and then that'll be multiplied by delta x. But delta x won't depend on your i counter. You can pull the delta x out of the summation. And so that's what's in front there, the delta x, b minus a over n. Then we have the summation, i equals 1 to n of f evaluated at a plus i delta x. We're ready. We're all set. Okay, let's dive in to an integral by definition. The function is simple, x squared. The interval is simple, 1 to 5. What's the area under the parabola between x equals 1 and 5? From the definition of the definite integral. The exact area, no approximations, exact area. So from the previous slide, we have our formula. Now let's evaluate that formula. Who's A? Who's B? Uh, A is 1. B is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So outside of our summation, we have 4 over n. 
inside our summation. We have f evaluated at a who's 1 plus i delta x. And delta x is now b minus a over n, so 4 over n. So we have the symbol for the integral. And now we have the limit that is represented by the definition, the Riemann sum. And we are going to evaluate this limit. Where do we begin? The function f. We have to plug in 1 plus 4 in, a 4 over n times i, in for x. Square it. We have to square it. It's a binomial. We can square it. We just multiply it out if you want. You'll have uh, 1 plus uh, 8 of those i over n's. And then you have 16 of those i squared over n squared. Yeah, when you foil that out. Don't forget that 4 over n's on the outside, though. That's your delta x on the outside. Okay, we are at the point we were at in the previous video where we just have to evaluate this limit. We'll break up this sum, we'll pull out the constants, and we'll focus on the sum of the i's, the sum of the i squares, the sum of the ones. We'll go to the formula sheet, grab those, and we'll be done. It's doable. But you just got to know the notation. All right, so we break up the sum, and then we'll pull out the constants that don't have anything to do with i, the factors that are constants that don't have anything to do with the i like 8 over n and 16 over n squared. Pull those guys out. Have it color-coded our three sums. We know that the sum of i equals 1 to n of 1 is just n. We know the sum of the i equals 1 to n of i squared is the formula n times n plus 1 over 2. And we know that the sum of i equals 1 to n of i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. That comes from our from our toolbox of um, finite sums. We're almost done. I think what we should do next is go ahead and put that 4 over n back in. So we have 4 over n times n, that's just the 4. 4 over n times 8 over n, that's 32 over n squared. And the lastly, um, well, times the other guy, n times n plus 1 over 2. And then uh, finally we'll have uh, um, oh yeah, the last one, uh, 64 over n cubed times your, your cubic formula. Let's do some cancellation. The 32 and the 2 give you a 16. The n's can cancel. The 64 and the 6 can give you a 32 and a 3. The n can turn the um, n cubed into a n squared. Multiplying out the n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 gives you that quadratic 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. Now let's, let's, it looks a mess, let's simplify it. So we have a four, we have the 16 n plus one over n. We have the 32, two n squared plus three n plus one over three n squared. It's a limit at infinity. So it's just a matter of degree of numerator equals the degree of the denominator. So the ratio of their coefficients, okay. Or you could even break it up further. Like since it's only a single term in the denominator, you can just break it up into many fractions there. Anybody who has an over n is going to go off to zero. I have the ones that don't have that in blue and the ones that do have that in red, not associated with the red and blue from above. But but um, yeah, why not? Do it this way. That works too. And so the guys that are in red, they go to zero. Any constant over n, as n goes to infinity, that's going to go to zero. Guaranteed. So then your answer is just 4 plus 16 plus 64 over n. You're done. 20 plus 64 over 3. Sorry, I said over n. Uh, so 60 plus 64 over 3. 124 over 3. You did it. Uh, 41 and a third. But that was a lot of work. And so we must have a better way. And we'll build that better way in the upcoming videos. It's the fundamental theorem of calculus. With such a name, we could tell the importance of it. We don't want to do this, okay? We, we don't want to do a, a bunch of these, maybe just one of these ever in our life. So through properties that we're going to learn in the next video and through the fundamental theorem of calculus, the next video set, we'll be on our way. Thanks for watching and sticking in and going through that tough problem. Good job. You can do this. Don't give up. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. Please uh, comment down below, like, subscribe, uh, reach out to me if you need any help. My website is calccoach.com. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.